We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. It's been a while since we've seen such high-profile news. Tucker Carlson has always been on the rumor mill, but what he did recently is going to rock the world for sure. This in itself was a blow to the Biden administration's ass. The televangelist is bluntly saying that the media in the States has long forgotten the truth. He was followed by the American Secret Services to prevent the interview. We must assume that the journalist has proof of this, which will also see the light of day. Amazing things are happening today, so let's look into them. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. They have no real idea what's happening in this region, here in Russia or 600 miles away in Ukraine. But they should know. They're paying for much of it in ways they might not fully yet perceive. Of course, many Americans don't even realize what's going on there. We hear the constant propaganda. Our president blames everyone but won't even look into his own actions. Carlosen has long suspected Biden of corruption and mismanagement of policy. He knows that Trump's policies are more correct and directed at our country. Carlosan has said many times that he will vote for Trump and support him. At least each of us deserves to hear the truth. Most of the world understands this perfectly well. They can see it. Ask anyone in Asia or the Middle East what the future looks like. And yet the populations of the English-speaking countries seem mostly unaware. They think that as nothing has really changed. And they think that because no one has told them the truth. Their media outlets are corrupt. They lie to their readers and viewers. And they do that mostly by omission. Tucker is telling the real truth. We can have no doubt in his words because no matter how loud and sharp he speaks, it is and will be the truth. He has never been afraid to talk about the most scary and risky topics. He vehemently hated the current government and could openly criticize his acquaintances. He was not afraid to come to Moscow and conduct an interview with the president of Russia. This is truly astounding. His words about the corrupt media are true. Most journalists are paid and do only what is favorable to their government. For example, since the day the war in Ukraine began, American media outlets have spoken to scores of people from Ukraine, and they have done scores of interviews with Ukrainian President Zelensky. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions, specifically designed to amplify Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe and pay for it. The USA has spent about $46.6 billion on military aid to Ukraine. This figure makes Washington the leader among all Kiev's allies. At the same time, European Union countries sent $38 billion to the Ukrainian armed forces. Of these, Germany, Denmark, and Poland are the largest donors. The United Kingdom has also promised to allocate $7 billion for direct military aid. It's funny for you to hear that, isn't it? Our country has been helping Ukraine since the beginning, and our media continues to support us. Our taxes go to Ukraine, and there is nothing we can do about it. At the same time, our politicians and media outlets have been doing this, promoting a foreign leader like he's a new consumer brand, not a single Western journalist has bothered to interview the president of the other country involved in this conflict, Vladimir Putin. Most Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his goals are now. They've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. And we have the right to tell them about it because we are Americans too. Is it true what we see every day on TV? Is it true that we can say what we want to say? Do we know that our country has a bright future? I think these questions will remain open until we can see Tucker's full interview with Putin. At the moment, it is known that it will last two hours and we will be able to discover a lot of things we didn't know before. What do you think about that? Write your opinion in the comments and do not forget to watch other shocking news on the channel.